how did it all begin? I think it was back when I was a toolmaker. Uh, I was in charge of a 3D printing lab in a hearing aid company. And there I got the chance to actually print quite a lot of small production parts. But the problem was these production parts, they were simply just not good enough. They could actually have the achieved tolerances and sizes, but the, uh, the final part quality was not really there yet. Uh, yeah, that was my old garage, uh, and we, it was not ready to to uh, to uh, be a lab or a tool shop or anything like that. But uh, Sean and I has bought uh, half a tool shop from uh, a company. Uh, we we just we rapidly uh, uh, refurbed the the garage to to be a tool shop and a lab where the first prototype was actually born. Then we thought well, we have a really good idea here, but now the idea got so big, we might be able to make a business plan. And then we called Lasse. And the Lasse, he was hooked just at the same. And uh, then within a few days, we got the first uh, 50,000 Danish crowns to make a PUC prototype. And within a week or two or something like that, we sourced all the components, we built the prototype, and we got the proof of concept successful. We contacted a few companies uh, and a consultancy and we got a student, a chemical engineer student uh, and a material scientist. And uh, I think about two months later, we had the first uh, 3D printing resin that could dissolve in water. And then Jon, being a tool maker, decided to uh, basically start making injection mold inserts to see what kind of punishment this resin would take. Uh, at some point, we realized we were onto something. I, I hardly really compare it to 3D printing because, I mean, I can, but there's no comparison uh, because 3D printing uh, in the Z-axis in particular uh, you just don't get the strength. Uh, you, you might get a part that you can hold in your hand and it looks okay, uh, but it, it's, you, the difference is you might be able to test fit, but you can't really test function. Comparing it to injection molding, I think it's the best comparison, but it's way faster and way cheaper than, than what we used to do with tooling. But that's not even a fair comparison for freeform injection molding because Freeform injection molding can do features that you could never do in, in injection molding. Uh, and that's where now it compares back to 3D printing. Because we're 3D printing the mold and that mold dissolves, it allows us to do features at full strength, even in carbon fiber filled or glass filled materials that you could never inject the mold with standard tooling. Well, in about 10 years, the goal is for us to own the field of 3D printed tooling. Of course, we believe we have a superiorly competitive uh, technology. We believe that we will be able to roll it out uh, across the world. Uh, we're already in the process of doing just that. We believe in making freeform injection molding more accessible to a wider audience that will be using our technology to solve an even wider scope of work within the field of rapid injection mold tooling.